please recall that in the last class we discussed about AC magnetization. That means whenever a core is excited by an alternating voltage source and which in turn results in a flux in the core in such a pattern as to create an induced voltage E which will oppose the applied voltage. Right? So you will have a flux which is set up in the core in such a pattern to oppose the applied voltage. That means you, you know that the RMS value of the induced voltage is given by 4.44 into frequency into number of turns into the maximum flux in the core. Now, how will that maximum flux come? We have seen that that maximum flux uh, it will come from a current drawn from the source because the flux that is in the core will be decided by the current and that current that is drawn we call it as a magnetizing current. That magnetizing current will be in phase with the flux because you know the flux is, a, is the result of the current. So now we have a magnetizing current and a magnetizing uh, we should create that flux which in turn will induce a voltage in the coil which opposes the applied voltage. Okay. Now we have seen that this magnetizing current will be lagging the applied voltage by 90 degrees ideally and the magnitude of this magnetizing current would depend upon the permeability of the core. Okay. So we have seen that the AC magnetization is different than DC magnetization. In DC magnetization all this back EMF is not present and the current is purely decided by the circuit element namely the voltage, DC voltage at the winding terminals and the re inherent resistance in the winding. Okay. So we have seen this main difference in DC and AC. Now next we went on to say that uh, this uh, there is another phenomenon that takes place whenever the flux is going through a cycle uh, we notice that we observe a phenomenon called a magnetic hysteresis. So the core goes through a magnetic hysteresis uh, phenomenon or a hysteresis loop with the thing that the energy is taken at each cycle from the source but that much energy is not totally returned to the source. It is retained in each cycle, uh, which will be that energy that is retained will be proportional to the area of the hysteresis loop and the maximum flux density. Okay? And we call this energy that is lost in this process per second is the power and that power is called the hysteresis loss. And we got an expression for the hysteresis loss in the last class. Okay. Let us say pH, we say is proportional to some constant, let us say C1. And we said it is proportional to the frequency because higher the frequency, higher the loss. That is that is obvious because higher frequency that is the power per second. And we said this is proportional to also the B max to the power of N, where we call N as a strain mates constant named after So this was what we learnt in the last class. And N we said is typically in, in a range 1.62, okay, 1.62, 2.5, okay. So we find that hysteresis loss in a core has this relation. It is proportional to maximum flux density. That means to what extent maximum flux density in the core it can go. If we increase the maximum flux density, obviously uh, the hysteresis loss will also be altered. So you must know it is a, it is very much depend upon this and as well as the frequency and of course C1 is a constant which will depend upon the property of the material okay? and, and the area of the hysteresis loop. So in order to how do you reduce hysteresis loop, hysteresis loss. Okay? So 
we must know how to reduce this loss, which is how do you do this? See, you have to operate at a given flux density because the maximum flux density depends upon the maximum flux in the core and maximum flux in the core depends upon the applied voltage. Since you normally want to apply a rated voltage, the cores normally operate at a rated flux. Okay? Most of the cores, you would, you would like to operate at a rated flux density and the rated flux. Therefore, uh, you would uh, not like to alter normally this. And you are also uh, uh, would like to operate at a nominal frequency. Okay? That is also fixed. Yes. We cannot alter this. Huh? We cannot alter the flux, but we can increase the area so that our flux remains the same while the B comes from. Yeah, but then what is, is it a very uh, very economical sense? That means you, in, a, in a given core, you can operate at certain given flux density. So typically, maybe 0.8 to 1 Tesla maximum flux density, which is operator 1, 1.2 Tesla. So why do you want to underutilize the core? So again, that is not, it doesn't make an engineering sense. Therefore, they, we would like to choose material which will have a minimum hysteresis uh, loop. minimum hysteresis loop. Okay? That means you must have a very good material, basically soft magnetic materials. Okay? So we would like to do it like this. Okay. Now, this is one phenomenon. Let us look at another phenomenon, which is like this. We have seen a core. Let us take a core as we did last time. This has the third dimension also. Okay. So let us say it, you, are, you are just um, going into the perpendicular to the board also. So let us say this is the end terms. This, we have seen that it is applied with a voltage which is varying with time. Okay. Now, you let us take a uh, some cross section like this. So what we are what we are actually seeing is. Um, a some type of a uh, cross section of the same thing. I just taken a small block of this in which the the it's going like this and maybe coming out like this. Okay. Means and of course it goes through several turns. Okay. Now and uh, your uh, flux is, the changing flux is going like this, okay. So obviously you have a flux which is changing with time, okay. When the flux changes with time, 
in the core there is after all core is also a an electrically conducting material then what will happen when there is a change of flux in the core what do you expect so there will be voltages induced in the core okay so we we know that due to change of flux in the core voltages are induced in the core in what direction to to follow the which law lenzas law as per in a direction to follow lenzas law okay that means uh the when the flux is increasing it should create a current in a direction to decrease that flux okay so what will happen uh which direction will it be hmm uh if if the if the current if the current is induced this way then it will create a flux in the upward direction so it will be um in in this way okay so let us say you will you will have a flux sorry current and voltages induced this way okay to so oppose this flux okay in fact you will notice that the induced currents will be a mirror reflection of the injected currents so you are you are putting a current in the winding like this so it this works like a short circuited secondary in a way okay so the direction of the currents uh in the core wherever will be that which will be opposing the change of flux okay so whenever there is um if you say it is uh flux is increasing that means it will it will it will cause in in a in a in this direction to decrease uh, this flux okay so the the since what we are trying to say is since the core is conducting the core is electrically conducting because the, it is a conducting material silicon steel is a conducting material normally so currents are induced induced to oppose change of flux okay they oppose change of flux it's very simple therefore <laughs> um while the your induced currents are like this while your injected currents are like this induced currents will be in the other way around because that's that's how it is uh, going like this okay now these currents are called eddy currents okay
¿Qué? Now, throughout the core, you will find such currents at any cross section. If you take any cross section, they will be induced in such a way. For example, if it is here, uh, it will be inducing in this direction. Okay? So, so if it is this way here, so it will be here, this way, so that it is opposes the, the flux. Okay? And here also, if you cut it here, they will also produce certain like this. Okay? Which will again be in which direction? So it will be like this. Yes? Other way around. Okay. Because the flux is going down. So it will be like this. Okay. Uh, now, if it is going this way, so it is the it is this way, okay? Because the flux is now going down, okay? So you will notice that it's almost the same sort of a uh, patterns uh, you have to see. Even here, um, it, it is it is this way, so that the flux when it is going, and in the other side it will be opposite of this. That means the eddy current direction here, you know, if you just cut it here and look from the top, and here and here will be opposite way, okay? And same thing here to here, because the flux direction has, has changed. If the flux is increasing here in this direction, okay, flux is increasing here in this direction, okay? Okay, now these are called, these currents obviously are decided by the, the voltage is induced because of the flux and uh, the currents are induced because of the conductivity of the core material. Okay, and these uh, currents, what will be its impact? So it will again, these currents cause losses, which in turn cause, cause losses. And these losses are called the eddy current losses. These are called eddy current losses. Okay? That will again be taking place in the core similar to hysteresis loss. Okay? Now, how can these be reduced? Can you reduce them? Yes, sir. Yeah, by? Yeah, by, lamination. by laminations. So, can be reduced by using laminated core. <coughs> they can be reduced by using laminations. In making the core. So whenever you see an electro, electromagnetic, uh, ma, ma, whenever you see an electromagnetic device which carries AC, you will invariably see that the core are made up of laminations. It is not a solid iron, but a laminated pieces are stacked together. So what you do is instead of this, <coughs> instead of making a solid one, so you will you will have. Um, laminations like this. So you, you cut it, they are there fixed like this. Okay? So that means they will all be, let's say each one is a sort of a, so these are, let's say laminations. The core, if it is solid core, uh, 
then there will be more indicating loss. Supposing, let us say, what will happen if you make it through laminations and and stack them together? Okay, you make the make a thin sheets, stack them to, to, together to form the respective length. Then, instead of this, yes, there is no path here. And you will also make sure that between the two, these, these are all insulated. I mean, that means laminations are insulated. That means they are coated with insulating material. So, that even when you stack, it does not form an electrical short circuit. Therefore, you would expect, instead of currents going like this, you would expect current just goes like this. Okay. So, uh, this will uh, give uh, a, a, a sort of a, each one uh, a longer length, it is, after all it is V square by R of the length. So, if you are increasing the resistance to that, in this process you are increasing the resistance to the uh, current path. Okay. So, basically you are increasing the because by you are increasing the length of the current path. Sir, how are we in, in, increasing the length of the path, sir? Because, uh, you know, uh, after all, this whole voltage, you know, flux is now, after all, uh, each, each lamination will be cutting less flux for the same. You have, you have these, you, you will see they are all, you, you are just making a cut, instead of, you know, this is almost like a dead short circuit of a big core. Okay. So, here uh, each of the, because the flux also is, is, is reduced to each of the sheets in a way. Okay. And the flux density then, uh, e e this is one uh, resistance path. Compared to this resistance, there are several resistances like this. So, that the currents, after all, if you, if you make a, if you have a thick sheet, and make it smaller sheets, obviously currents in each one of them will be smaller. Okay. Pardon? No, no, no. For, if you increase the, no, no. for the same voltage, uh, you see, if you have this path, now you, you are making it, your resistance path you have increased for the same voltage. Overall voltage. Okay? Path will? No, no. See, some of the currents, see, you look at the currents which will go into each of the sheets. That magnitude of current that will be run because your whole of this, this whole, this, this whole path is cut now. Okay? So, if you look at, after all, even if it's the same, this thing, so the current that will be induced in each of the sheets will be considerably smaller. Okay, compared to what it would be if you have a dead short. It is a common sense, you know, if you have a thick bar, uh, a thick sheet, if you cut it, okay, into smaller one, obviously they, there will be increased, overall increased resistance to this part. Okay. Now, uh, if you do this, it reduces the core action of that core thing. Pardon? So, it doesn't lamination reduces the core action, so the linkage. Uh, lamination to to some extent, uh, yes, it reduces the uh, flux path also, but but that is uh, much because you stack it together, you are magnetically, you do not want to change, but electrically you want to have a considerable increase. You are insulating the two sheets, okay, several sheets are being insulated, in fact, very, very thin sheets. So, you will observe that the currents are almost negligible, uh, considerably reduced instead of having all of them together like a thick conductor. So, it is like saying that, okay. If this is the eddy current which will be flowing, if there is a voltage induced, uh, what you are saying, you are just cutting it into different sheets. So, you will see there are very, very small uh, currents, okay, which, which will go through, uh, you are cutting it uh, electrically. So, you are almost insulating it for electrical purposes, okay. This eddy current loss depends upon what factors now? Can you tell me? 
material property then huh? the flux then frequency frequency okay so similar to history is it depends upon the frequency of operation it depends upon the operating flux density okay and it depends upon the uh, the material properties so a similar expression for eddy current loss uh, will be like this P E that is eddy current loss is some constant again some C two into it is proportional to F square because it is I square R is, is proportional to V square and so on and is also proportional to B max square because basically V square by R because V is the voltage which is induced because of the flux. And then it is also proportional to the T square, where T is the thickness of the sheet. For each of the laminations, thickness, you will have this. Okay. So, this, this loss is also prevalent in AC magnetization, not in DC magnetization. Okay, you see another, yeah, another factor here. Okay, and the both hysteresis and eddy current losses are prevalent in what part of the magnetic circuit? It is in the core part or iron part. So the total is called the iron loss or core loss. is let us say P C is P H plus P E, the sum of these two, sum of the hysteresis that they currently normally termed as iron loss because it is in iron or a core loss it is in core. Okay? And uh, you will also notice that one is proportional to F, another is proportional to F square. So, you will see this is some constant times F plus another constant times F square provided your B max and F are fixed, okay, for, um, for constant B max. For a given core, supposing you are operating at a constant B max, uh, you can say this is can be written as uh, K1 F plus K2 F square. Okay. Or just one second. Or you can say PC by F will be K1 plus K2 F. Okay. So, if you plot, if you can uh, calculate the core loss at different frequencies, what will it look like? So, it will be a straight line like this. So, this will be K1, uh, sorry, this will be K1 and the slope K2. So, th you will find that this way, if you, if you can calculate or measure the core loss at different frequencies, you can separate them also. So, this way, after finding K1 and K2, After finding K1 and K2, we can separate PH and PE. So, if you want to know what is the difference, you will also have PH plus PE. Okay? So, you 
you can measure the loss for any given core, you can measure the loss at different frequencies and get this division. Let's come to one important next point. So we know that there are two of these losses are there. Their, their iron losses are available. Now, if somebody wants to design an electromagnetic structure, he should have a mechanism to uh, know how much is the iron losses. So you need some type of a design data to be given by the manufacturers of the materials. Okay. So normally, uh, a design data. is given by core manufacturers not, not core, core material manufacturers because core you are making they only provide you the silicon sheet steel okay most of the um, companies um, this is this is also a material science uh, area where you must like to have a very good uh, material. What do you mean a very good material? It must have a very good magnetic properties. What is very good? Yeah. It must have very high core loss. So it must have a minimum core loss per unit volume and it must draw very small current. Design data is given uh, by core material manufacturers to find PC. Okay. Now, what they give okay, what they give is for given B max, they will tell you the p the core loss per unit um, weight or volume or maybe that means it may be watts per kg watts per kg of core loss it will give you so it, it may be somewhere so this is that is a pc that is the power density. That is how much power loss density. But I have given you in one of the uh, handouts one of the uh, material properties. So, therefore, what will you do to calculate the core loss? You know the operating flux density. So, you find out the, see, for the given flux density, you find out the uh, the core loss per unit um, volume uh, weight, then you know you must know the weight of the core and say this is the core loss, total core loss. Okay, and these are one of the design curves which should be uh, useful for any of the designers of electromagnetic systems. Okay. seen that in AC magnetization there is there is the magnetizing current drawn depend upon the flux which is in turn depends upon the voltage. Second one we know hysteresis loss and third one we know about the eddy current loss. So these are what happens in AC magnetization. There is one more phenomena which happens. Let us see it like this. We have seen this uh, BH loop and what is the x axis will be? Let's make it little symmetrical. What is the 
x axis will be h and also it will also tells you the i and this will be the b and let us say it also operates the flux or it is also has something to do with the voltage okay because the flux decides the voltage okay now if the flux is if you if your applied voltage is sinusoidal then what will be the flux variation so that should also sinusoidal except that it will have a phase lag of 90 degrees okay so let us draw this uh, let us say you have the maximum flux this is flux which will go from phi max on the positive side to minus phi max okay i mean let us assume it's sinusoidal now for each of these for each point in phi you will have another point of i okay so whenever there is a each of the flux will have a corresponding i okay so if you really take a bh loop and, and from sinusoidal you uh, do a graphical uh, plotting you will notice interestingly well, it has to follow in the i will be varying from plus i max to minus i max isn't it so you you may notice that this will follow a pattern like this okay so th this will not be sinusoidal the current here this is current so if you actually look at the waveform of a current in an ac magnetic circuit okay when it is shown like this because the cur of course this will be i max maximum value this will be minus i max corresponding to this but intermediate points <coughs> if you take they will have a Uh, uh, a different it will because it, because the loop is not linear when will this be sinusoidal so when you when instead of this you have a straight line like this only then so if if it is a straight line then each one will have a linear relation okay S since this is non linear so you will find the next phenomena is Sinusoidal. Normal. 
normally it has third harmonics. Both are same. Uh, see, after all, there are no two currents. There's, I have only one winding. It is having drawing a current. Okay, that current is going to magnetize the core. Okay, and to, because that magnetization is decided by the voltage applied. So that current that is drawn from the supply will be non-sinusoidal. But then the current would be non-sinusoidal. Uh, voltage is sinusoidal. Current is not sinusoidal. Okay. So this is what you will observe. Uh, still, uh, 90 yeah, yeah, 90 degree shift will be there. 90 degree shift will be for the fundamental. Sir, but how did they have a shift? When they are not sinusoidal, uh -huh. what do you mean by shift? Yeah. Fundamentally shifted by 90 degrees. Okay. <laughs> See, the, initially we assumed it is a sinusoidal um, variation of voltage and current. But in actual practice, because of the non-linearity, over and above that fundamental, there is a third harmonic component coming. Okay? That fundamental is an ideal situation where the magnetizing current is expected to be sinusoid. Okay? So this is uh, what you will observe. Maybe I am trying to get some experiments organized to show you how they form a non-science. You can see the waveforms uh, maybe in the next class or whatever. Okay? So, these are the, uh, the different uh, phenomena that you will observe. So, let us sum up what are the AC magnetization. To sum up the following points, number one is It is the voltage causes the flux which causes the current, which is not same as DC magnetization. In AC magnetization, it is the voltage which is causes the flux which causes the current. Okay? And number two is ideally I lags. V by 90 degrees and I is depends on the required flux and the reluctance of the path. And we see in AC magnetization there is the phenomena of hysteresis. We also see in AC magnetization phenomena of eddy currents. So, you will find these two are the one which results in losses in the core, which is there in, they are all only, these are only in AC. This, all these phenomena only in AC and not in DC magnetization. Okay? Then we also found out that uh, magnetizing current is non sinusoidal even if the voltage is sinusoidal. So these are the few of these uh, phenomena that, that you observe. In the case of a DC uh, 5 versus psi depends upon the material. It degrees slightly in, in the linear region and becomes saturated later. Okay? Okay. Now, the about
about the electromagnetic phenomenon, the only thing that is remaining is the force. What is the force operating on a uh, magnetic uh, field? The force density at any point any is what is the uh, field equations that you know? Q into This is the force at any point in the in the circuit. You have the now in most of the circuit that we are dealing with. The, we have seen that uh, electric field is considerably smaller. Okay, in most of the conductors. Okay, therefore we can neglect E. <coughs> And we can write that the force is Q into V cross D. Because we have one component of current which is due to the movement of charges. Because V is the velocity and this is the movement of charges. Okay? So, we can get a simple expression for the force by writing that this force, this is our force density that is the rho dv into v cross b, where rho is the charge density. In any given volume, the rho is the charge density. We have rho dv into this thing. Or we can say rho v into dv cross b. Or if you have the charge density into dv. So, you can write this as j d. charge density into velocity, they are moving, you know. So, that will have a dimension of a current density J um, and I will complete this aspect today by writing which one? Force in a no. <coughs> How you see for force uh, you need to um, multiply by the because you have to integrate for the whole body, you know. Okay, at any point. <coughs> this is the. But it is, a, it is for the given uh, charge, and that means it is for the given charge and for the given current. So, in fact, you, you will have a expression for force will be given by IDL cross B. If you have a small element DL, And you have the, f so standard expression for force for this, okay. So, these are some of the phenomenon, electromagnetic phenomenon, which we have, uh, I mean these will be, we will be using in subsequent uh, uh, lectures.